Hello everyone and welcome to this week's State of the Market Update. So we had a hurricane last week, pretty major one, very significant, and it doesn't appear to have done too much in terms of disruption to the freight market in general. Obviously it did a lot to Panama City and Mexico Beach and that area down there. Uh, <clears throat> but as I was driving to Knoxville last Thursday, I noticed a slew of power trucks, utility trucks, going back north to Ohio and uh, Indiana. And doing a little research, we found out that it, the damage was not quite as ex as extensive as they anticipated, largely due to the fact that it was it moved so fast. But yet again, there were obviously areas that were very devastated. Uh, but in terms of massive amounts of freight market disruption, uh, not not quite a lot. There, uh, there was some movement in Savannah. We saw a lot of repositioning of freight regionally down there with the outbound uh, volume and inbound volume both being very elevated. Uh, but other than that, we've got some movement in Atlanta that I'm going to show you here. Right now I've got pulled up is the Head Hall Index Weekly Change. Uh, this is a great map to kind of start your day if you're looking for regional de uh, destabilization in the freight market. Uh, we've explained it in the past. It's essentially the difference between the outbound volume and inbound volume. And when you have a big movement and that number to the positive side, uh, you are setting yourself up for capacity issues. In, in other words, uh, they're eventually they're going to run out of trucks because you have more outbound than inbound. And the rates should then follow at some point uh, in, in the process. It, it may take it a while to, to happen, but this is kind of your first indication as uh, freight movements tend to be a little bit sporadic, uh, especially this time of year. Uh, you're going to have these little pockets of destabilized uh, activity, and the head-all index is going to give you a quick view on how, where to look first. So Atlanta looks like it's showing a little bit, and this up here is the Joliet market, which is kind of the uh, industrial sector of the Chicago area. It's the south side um, of Chicago and points just slightly west. Uh, and it is showing a significant swing in the head-all index. So we've got a lot more outbound coming up. Their head-all index right now is a 96, a very high value. I don't, you don't see very many head-all index values in the 90s. Uh, so Chicago market, again, a 58 point jump in the last week alone. So they've got a lot of outbound uh, happening in, in Chicago. And of course, Atlanta, it's still the negative six. So it's a pretty low value. I think we talked about it in the past. Atlanta is normally kind of a, you know, it's either up or down, but it looks like it's moving quickly towards being a little bit more outbound than inbound as we had a 31 point swing in outbound volume in Atlanta last week. So again, it's not so important to see what this number is here as a negative six, uh, but it is important to see that they did have a big surge of outbound volume last week in Atlanta, and I think we can pull that up. Just to give a quick view, head haul index, Atlanta, and you can see here it's starting to pull back up, and a lot of the year it spent time around 50. Uh, when things were really destabilized in the summer. So we're starting to see things pick back up out of Atlanta. And just to go and check out Juliet as well, give a quick view of what's happening in Chicago. Bam, that's a big jump in, <laughs> out, of, out of Chicago this week. Uh, again, I, we haven't seen much in terms of tender rejections out of Chicago or Juliet, uh, I should say. But that doesn't mean that there won't be eventually, especially uh, if things continue on the path that they're going right now. Uh, what I did want to show you is a region of the country that is kind of showing uh, destabilization at the moment. And we've got a big push of volume uh, coming out of, and that's the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this time of year is kind of, you know, the Pacific Northwest, big push of freight out of their area. It's the one time of year that things kind of pick up for uh, Seattle, Christmas trees and the apples and, and all that kind of stuff starts to come off the coast over there. And we have been noticing, uh, even in the smaller markets, I've got three of them pulled up here in comparison to the United States Tender Volume Index. 
So this is measuring uh, outbound tender volumes in the country versus uh, these three markets in the Pacific Northwest. So I've got Seattle represented in green, and right now it is at 25% higher than the country is currently. Uh, and then you have outbound Portland that's operating about 12% higher. And of course, Twin Falls, Idaho, the big booming metropolis out there has got a 33% higher value. And it is significant um, in, in terms of discrepancy between the rest of the country because we have seen the majority of the country kind of operating below this level, kind of swinging uh, to the lower side on the volume, and the Pacific Northwest is starting to heat up this week. So something to pay attention to. So in summary, a hurricane did not have a huge impact as of yet on the freight market. Atlanta and Chicago are starting to show signs of some life uh, with some big outbound pushes this week. And then the Pacific Northwest appears to be waking up uh, in Christmas tree as we enter Christmas tree and uh, kind of the harvest season out there right before winter. So... Everybody have a great week and stay tuned next week for more market updates.